Hello everyone, my name is Isaac from the Innovation Consortium and today I'd like to share with you about bearings but specifically the classification and probably to know the different types if you're to purchase one, if you're to replace one, if you're doing any maintenance works and you want to know how to classify the sizes, the type or anything about a bearing. So today it's what we are going to be looking at. Uh, to start with, I would like you to know the clear picture or to know what a bearing is. And with me here on my table, I'm having these components. Uh, and these are what we call bearings, if you can take a clear look. This is one of them. Uh, all these components you're seeing here are bearings. Uh, except this one, this one is a crank arm but there is a portion where I'm going to explain about a bearing for the crank arm. So specifically, we normally have, actually we have two types of bearings. Uh, um, rather, we have two main classification of bearings and those are the roller bearings and the plain bearings. Uh, roller bearings, they normally have rollers. It could be a ball roller, it could be a roller itself, a roller bearing. Uh, the term roller, it means there is, a, there is a race which is racing within the bearing. Either of the two, during its working, one of the two races will be working or it will be rolling. Uh, that's why we call them roller bearings. And the other plane bearings, for them they are normally static, but they are resistant to wear and they are bearing materials in their nature. Uh, to give you examples of these plain bearings, you might have come across a component like this or this. These two move hand in hand. This is a crank arm. Uh, and normally in crank arms, we have bearings. Actually, they are called journals. They are journals, but they are also bearings. Um, and they are some of the plain bearings we have. So, these are the journals, if you can see. They are normally split and they are made out of bearing material. So they are plain, plain bearings. For them, they have nothing like rollers whatsoever, but they are naturally made from bearing materials and they, are, they also qualify to be called bearings. The second example I'll give you, if you've ever come across a brass bush, working as a bearing. It will be a bearing, but also a plain bearing because it has nothing like a roller or balls. Uh, for it, it's just plain as brass as you can see it. But in its nature, brass, it's a bearing material. So briefly, all plain bearings are made from bearing materials. That could be brass, it could be bronze, it could be alloyed steels uh, to make the to make the, the bearing itself the, the plain bearing they add some alloys in the steel to make it a bearing and very many other 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 materials basically uh, to talk about the roller bearings uh, as you can see the other types I'm having they are different in their structures, but they, are, they all fall under what we call roller bearings. There is this, there is this, uh, there is this, uh, there is this, this. There are very many, very many types, but they are all roller bearings because they have rollers in between the two races, the outer race and the inner race. They are rollers in the middle of the two races to make it a complete bearing actually. Now after briefly knowing about bearings, I'll be talking about the classification, how you classify a bearing, and probably I'll be talking about the two main classifications, that is the size and the type of the bearing. Uh, first of all, I'll be talking about the, the size, you classify the bearing according to its size. Uh, take for instance, I'm having this bearing of mine here. 
So if I want to classify according to the size of the bearing, I'll have to take the measurements of the whole bearing. That is, if we are to measure the bearing, we measure the, the diameter, the outside diameter, we measure the inside diameter or the bore of the bearing, and we measure the thickness. Uh, the outside diameter, the bore, then the thickness. The thickness, I mean this. So, we are talking about how to measure the size. How to measure the size. How to measure. The size, the size of a bearing. Remember, we are still on the classification, but this time around, first of all, we are talking about classifying it according to its size. So we are picking this very bearing, and we are going to get the measurements or the size of this particular type of bearing. So remember, we talked about we measure the races actually the races we measure the sizes of the races uh, but to briefly talk about the races to get a, a, a clear picture of what a race is a bearing has five major parts uh, to talk about uh, it has the outer race if you have to look at this bearing it has this outer race it has the inner race and it has the ball the ball bearings, I can take this one and take, it has also the ball bearings inside, they are like balls but they are inside, then it has the cage which retains the, the ball bearings. So we have the outer race, we have the inner race, we have the ball bearings themselves, they can be ball bearings, they can be roller bearings, any of the two, and we have the retainers which retain or the cage, actually, which retain the balls or the rollers inside the two races. And the other component, it's the seal, which seals off the balls or the rollers inside the, the races. So I hope you understand now if I talk about a race or the ring of a bearing. So taking sizes uh, or classifying a bearing according to its size, we shall take the measurements of the outside race of the outside race or the outside ring of the bearing. We take the measurement of the inside race. So after getting the measurement of the inside race, we also get the measurement of the thickness of the bearing. This is the thickness of the bearing. So if you're purchasing or you're designing a machine or you're, you're maintaining a machine, take for instance, at times, these bearings have a tendency of corroding or, or rusting or, or anything getting any damages and you can't really know the, the exact size of the bearing. If you have the races, the size of the races, uh, the outside diameter, and to clarify on how to measure them, we shall need a caliper. As we talked about in our episodes of how to of a vanier caliper, this time around we are putting the caliper in use. So you get your caliper. How do we measure the outside dress? <coughs> You get your caliper on the side of the, the outside jaws. You measure the outside diameter, as you can see. So here, I'm picking the measurements of the outside race. And here, it's showing me the outside race is 72 millimeters. How do I take measurements of the bore of the inside race? 
with the outside jaws of the caliper, these two. I take the measurements of the bore of this particular bearing. And here it's showing me 35. So outside, 72, inside, 35. Then the other measurement I'm taking, we said it's the thickness. So the thickness, I still use the outside jaws of the caliper. I measure the thickness. This is how we measure the thickness. And here it's showing me a 17. So we are measuring the race thickness, showing me 17. So, in accordance to our measurements, if we are to classify this very bearing according to its measurements or according to its size, we said the diameter, the diameter of the outside race, it was 72, and the, the bore of the inside race was 35, and the thickness, the thickness was 17. It was 17. I'm talking about a 72, 35, and a 72. Those are millimeters on the vernier caliper. So 72 millimeters, 35 millimeters, 17 millimeters. So basically, if you're to look or if you're to order for any bearing and you have these sizes, by all means, you'll be able to get this specific type of bearing. If you have these measurements, it's the bearing, whether you order it from Germany or from Chisenyi or from anywhere, it will be the same type of bearing. So briefly to furthermore, talk about the classification of a bearing according to its size. Uh, we shall take another example. We have this is a taper roller bearing. It's another type of bearing. But as you can see, for this type, it's not basically flat as compared to the first bearing I was having. So somebody could ask, how should I take the measurement of this? So in most cases, or by all means, we take the major measurement of the overall thickness of the bearing. I take for instance, for this specific bearing, the biggest or the longest portion or point of the bearing is where we shall derive our measurements. So this one for the inside race, it's longer or it's wider than the thickness of the, the outside race. So the outside race is smaller than the inside race. So we shall be picking our measurements from the inside dress, basically. So for the thickness of this taper roller bearing, we shall take our calipers and we measure from the outside of the inside dress, basically, to get the specific thickness. So this one is showing us a 28, if I'm to measure the thickness, showing us a 28, meaning, the thickness of this bearing is 28 millimeters. But remember, the outside race, if I to measure the, the outside race only, for it it's showing 20 millimeters. So if you're to put in an order and you're requesting for a taper roller bearing and you only consider the measurement of the, the outside race, the thickness, uh, actually if you're to measure only the thickness, of the outside dress and you you don't measure the thickness of the inside dress which is relatively bigger than than that of the outside dress higher chances are you won't get the bearing you need or you get the wrong bearing basically so that's it for the classification according to size now after knowing or after understanding the classification of bearings in accordance to their sizes. And the other classification, it could be you classify a bearing according to its type. Uh, it could be a taper roller, it could be a flange block, it could be a pillow block, it could be a plain bearing, it could be a C bearing, a Y bearing, and very many types. But today, actually I would like to show you 
some of these, actually some of these very many types and you understand the types, the different types of bearings. Uh, I'll start with this one on my right. Uh, this is what we call a flange block bearing. Why we call it a flange block? It's because there is a, a bearing inside but it's seated or it's sitting inside the flange. So this we call it a flange block bearing. And by the way, with a flange block bearing and, and the other types of bearing, going back to the sizes, uh, if it's still new or if you're doing any maintenance, uh, most of the bearings, if the number doesn't deteriorate uh, because of corrosion or any other effects, uh, most of them have their part numbers uh, written or engraved on them. So with a plane or with a flange block or with a taper roller, all bearings have their part numbers written on them. And these part numbers, uh, by all means, if you're to search for the dif different types of bearings or the size of the bearing with a part number, you'll get the, that specific type of bearing you're looking for. So going back to the classification of, of a bearing according to its type, uh, as we had said, this is a flange block because it's sitting, it's a bearing sitting inside a flange. Uh, this is a pillow block, if you can see. It's a pillow block bearing and these are the part numbers. It's P P210, uh, it's FK, P210. So if you're to order, if you're to purchase, or if you want to replace the bearing, if you take a part number FK or P210, then you'll get, you'll get this specific type or this specific size of a bearing. We have taper roller bearings. Why taper roller? The rollers themselves, as you can see, if you can look closely to the cross section, they are tapered and they are rollers inside the cages. This retainer we said earlier on, remember we said the bearing has the inside dress, the outside, the, the outside dress, uh, it has the rollers themselves or the bearings themselves and these are the bearings. They could be rollers or they could be ball, ball bearings or roller bearings. So <clears throat> it's called a taper bearing or because a taper roller bearing because the rollers are in a tapered form as you can see. <coughs> as you can look closely, they are in a tapered form. So that's what we call a taper roller bearing <coughs> and these these are the plain bearings as I had shown you earlier on these are plain bearings these are, are journals for, for a crank arm which normally run on the crankshaft these two you're trying to see here <coughs> so basically uh, to explain further, there are very many other types of bearings I can talk about. We have thrust bearings, uh, we have self-aligning. So basically, that's how we can, we can specify bearings in accordance to their types. So if you're to purchase one or if you're to order one, you can know the, the specific name of the bearing and you can order for one, knowing, having known its type. So you can say I want a taper roller bearing of such and such a size. This this could be 4233109. So if you order for a taper roller bearing 4333109, you'll get that specific type of bearing and the same sizes and the same type of the bearing. So briefly, that is how we can classify the bearings. Uh, I hope you've understood 
or you've got the clear picture of how to classify them. Uh, basically, there are two common ways of classifying them. That is the size and the type of the bearing. The size, we get it by measuring, and the type by the naming or the name of that very type of bearing. Uh, I remain Isaac from the Innovation Consortium. Thank you very much. Keep tuned in for our next episodes of How To.